Shalom, shalom. It's the brother DeBach Markab out of WFI, Indiana, coming back at you with these precepts, man. Right, and today I'm just gonna give mm, so and so a quick cold cut on uh, just an exhortation on being still in the spirit. You know, a lot of brothers, sisters, speaking for myself at this point, uh, we know we go through ups and we go through downs, but you know, like the book says, man. A just man follow seven times. All right, let's just get that. Let's just get it real quick in the book of Proverbs. All right. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, and verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. You know, there's a lot of righteous men in Israel, man. There's a lot of brothers and sisters in Israel, man. And, and, and at one point in time, we used to be in the world. We used to be in lust, murder, right? Rape, concupiscence, right? Envy, right? Jealousy. All these different things, aspects of pure wickedness, man. Well, right now, we've come back into who we are, the nationality of who we truthfully are. God's chosen people, Hebrew Israelites, of me personally from the tribe of Judah, right? But we fall sometimes. And when we fall, do that mean stay in the pit, man? That mean sit down and soak and grope, right? Woe is me. I don't deserve to be here, right? Stop posting, right? Stop exhorting your brethren. Stop hitting up your brothers. Stop calling your sisters, right? Stop seeking counsel. Stop going to camp. Yeah. These type of things can happen by entertaining demons, entertaining uh, uh, friends of this world. Didn't the Lord say if you're a friend of this world, it's enmity with God? Yeah, how was Sean's brother, man? All right, let's get that. It's the book of St. James. Let's get the book of James. Chapter 4 and verse... Let's start at verse number one. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war. Ye, me, Salakia, yet ye have not because ye ask not. We don't open our mouth and, 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 and ask uh, 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 help from the most high, man. We go and we seek these things. We go and we seek our own counsel. We go and seek a uh, uh, counsel from, from people in the world, right? We go and we seek, we go and we go and we go and we seek help from the so-called white man, right? We go and we seek help from things and, 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 and spirits and, 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 and we take heed to damn demons, man. Instead of going to our word, the law, you didn't fail, and then you didn't went to a, 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 a wicked brother, let's just so to say, or a wicked sister in the world, giving you nothing but damnable information that's going to lead you to a, a destruction, famine, and, and, and on the shitty end of the stick, pardon my French, when Jacob's trouble come, man. You don't want to be a part of these types of things, man. Then the Lord say, cast thy burden upon me. All right, we're going to come back to this precept in the book of James 4, right? Let me get this in the book of Psalms. Because I got to get a couple of these classic precepts, man. The nation needs this exhortation. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 55 and verse 22. Cast thy burden upon Yahweh, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Never suffer the righteous to be moved, man. The Lord said, cast his burden upon him, man. In the day of thy trouble, call upon him, man. That's what King David said, man, right? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 50, and verse 15. And call upon me in the day of thy trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. But unto the wicked, Yahweh saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take of my covenant in thy mouth? Sing thou hatest instruction. And cast us my words behind thee. That's what the wicked do every day, man. We cast the words behind the Most High God's back, man. 
We don't give a damn, man, right? We still got that worldly-ass mindset of Jake, man, right? Your pants sagging, man, head to the back spiritually, man, right? We don't give a damn. Fuck you. I'm just living to get my money. Excuse my French, man, right? That's how Jake want to live, man. That's how Eve want to do it, man. I just got, I, I'm just out here doing me. I'm living YOLO. I'm, I'm, out, I'm outside. It's madness. It's utter madness, man. It's sad, really, on a more deeper level, man. We got to get it together in these last days, man. Or the Lord going to put us to death. The Lord going to put me to death. I'm no better than you, right? Let me get another precept. All right? Let's get this in the book of Job, chapter 27. Just going through the spirit. Spirit, notes, kind of whatever. You know, I, I I had notes written down, but the Lord didn't put a spirit on me. I, I'm just speaking to my people right now, man. My people need this exhortation. I need this exhortation, man. We all need this exhortation, man, to stay on fire. This is the patience and the faith of the saints, right? This is the book of Job, chapter 27, in verse number two. As Yahweh liveth, who have taken away my judgment, and the Almighty who had vexed my soul, right? The Most High God, he got his hands on you right now, man. He got his kind of foot on your back right now like a big brother right now, man. But he loves you, man. Right? We can get that next, right? This is the book of Job, chapter 27 and verse 2. As yet, how it liveth, who have taken away my judgment, and the Almighty who had vexed my soul, all the while my breath is in me, and the spirit of Yahweh is in my nostrils. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. So our forefather Job is saying all the while while he is in his body, in his tabernacle, man, his lips, he said in verse four, my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit, man. That's how you got to be, man, in this tabernacle, man, in this weak as vile body that our forefather Paul described it as, man, right? You can't, you can't speak wickedness, man, because now you're speaking demons into existence, man. Now you're going off and doing these things, man. You're playing about it with your buddies, right? The Ankyam, the Akwab. Hey, now you're getting into these things, man, right? You can't be shaking hands with these demons, right? Because now these demons are jumping on you, man. Now you're dealing with a, a, a masturbation, right? Pornography, right? Lust, weed, cocaine. Now you back popping perks. It's madness, now you seeing things that's not even there. Like, come on, brother. Come on, sister. We got to get it together in these last days. It's, we, it, World War III has already started. Gaza and Israel already in war. Putin has already threatened to send a damn nuclear bomb over here. If y'all don't know, if a nuclear bomb even explodes in the air over here, it will literally be an EMP attack on the whole Western Hemisphere. We're going to get into that too. Verse number five, verse four. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. Yet I will forbid that I should justify you. Till I die, I will not remove mine integrity from me. My righteousness I hold fast and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Let mine enemy be as the wicked, and he that rises up against me as the unrighteous. For what is the hope of the hypocrite? Though he have gained, when Yahweh have taken away his soul. So, brothers, if you out here teaching one thing and you're doing another thing, the Lord is going to kill you. Put to, that, that, hey, hey, that's just what it is. Most high God is going to, he got, he got a missile with your name written on it. If you don't repent, brother, if you don't repent, sister, you teaching things and not and not walking by them, man. We gotta walk by everything that we that, that we speaking, man. We gotta live by every man. Let's get that real quick. Let's get that out of our out of, out of our Lord's mouth, man. Right. This is the book of Saint Matthew, chapter four, in verse number four. He says, "But he answered and said, It is written." Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taking him up into a holy city and set him on a pinnacle out of the temple. Salakia, that's all I wanted in that, man. Right, man? We shall live by every... Salakia. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, man. You got to live by every word that's in this book, man. 
If it ain't in this book, man, the hell with it, man. If, 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 if the wisdom ain't coming from the Bible, I don't give a damn about it, honestly. It's folly. I didn't, I, I, I didn't deem it folly. The Lord deemed it folly. My forefathers deemed it folly by the spirit and power of how about Shem Yahweh Shah as they were writing it. Because it wasn't written by them. It was written by the finger of God. And we doing a video, so we going to prove all things. This is the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 9. And verse 10. And yet how would delivered unto me two tables of stone written with the finger of God. And on them was written according to all the words which Yahweh spake with you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. This Bible was written by the finger of the Most High God through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah 3,000 plus years ago, man. All right. So let's go back to the book of James, chapter four. All right. It's the book of St. James. Chapter 4 and verse number 4. And it reads thus. First 4 and number 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they hence even of your lust that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war yet ye have not because ye ask not. We don't ask from the Most High God. We ask of these things. That's the reason why I went back to this precept. Salakia family. I know I'm a bit out of order, man. I'm just going through the spirit right now, man. It's the book of 2 Corinthians. All right. Salakia. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, and verse number 18. Let no man deceive himself. And any man among if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Yahweh. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, Yahweh knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. That's plain, man. Wisdom of the world is foolishness with the Most High God, man. If any man uh, seemeth to be wise, man, hey, he, 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 let him become a fool, man, that he may become wise, man. He got to humble down first because before he can do that. He's not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Why the hell would you hearken unto his counsel? Right? This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 1. Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. Straight like that, man. I don't think I caught it. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love Yahweh, the same is known of him. Right? Any man love Yahweh, the same is known of him. But if that brother don't even keep the command, why the hell would you hearken unto him, man? That's what our people do. They go and hearken unto these people in the world, these damn demons, and now they getting off into what the fuck, the, the, uh, Salakia, what, what the people in the world is doing, man. It's madness. It's madness. But it said, if any man love God, and how do we know if we love God? It's the book of 1 John, chapter 5, and verse number 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. That's plain, man. That's how you know if you love God or not, man. If you're keeping the commandments. And if he's not keeping the commandments, why are we hearkening to him? We only supposed to come down and sit down in the dust, meditate on our bed, and speak to the Most High God. Right? Let's get a precept. Chapter 5, this is the book of Psalms. I believe this is in the book of Psalms. 
It's the book of Psalms, chapter 4 and verse... Let's start at verse 1. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 4 and verse number 1. Hear me when I call, Yahweh of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still and be still. The Lord said commune on your bed and be still with your own heart, man. You got to meditate, man. Meditate in these laws, statutes and commandments, man. That's the only way that you're going to know to stay on track, man. The Lord hasn't put these law, statutes, and commandments on our inward parts yet, man. He hasn't written them on our hearts yet, man. Therefore, we got to stay in the law, man. We got to stay in the law. Right now, it, it, it's great to be in the prophecies right now, man. But we got to get back to the law. A lot of people forget the law. That's when you start going the hell off. Brothers stop wearing fringes. Sisters stop dressing modest. It gets ugly out here, man. Brothers get start losing jobs and all hell break loose, man. Sisters lose one job. They, they don't even want to go fill out an application no more, man. There's so many other ways and avenues for Wicked Eve to get money out here, man. It's just nothing but concupiscence out here, man. The Lord said, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 1 and verse number 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his seething. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff with the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahweh knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. That's plain, man. That's plain. You're either going to keep the commandments and live, Rebel and die, man. Bump that. You keep the commandments, get a chance to live. Rebel and die for show. That's what I'm going to name this video. Keep the commandments and get a chance. Rebel and die for show. Because that's what's going to happen to the saints. It's already promised that two thirds of us shall end up in the grave, man. That one third, man. You, we strive, we run that we may obtain to be a part of the election. Lord willing, Abu Rataza, Adawan Rataza, Lord willing, Father willing, right? And ancient Paleo Hebrew converted to the modern day piss poor English of the American gringos, right? Let's get a precept, man, All right? It's the book of Psalms, chapter 46, and verse number 10. Be still and know that I am Yahweh. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Yahweh of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The Most High God is our refuge, man. He the only thing that's going to save us from this turmoil, to, uh, tumultuous demons, these uprisings and uproars of these damn heathens, man. He the only thing that's protecting us, man. And all oh, this oppression. Think about the oppression that we go through on a daily as a so-called black man in America. You racially profiled. You don't know whether you, when you get pulled over by the cherries and berries, if you're going to have your life or not, if you're reaching for your, your damn uh, driver's license. Brother, please don't have no black phone case. And it's by you when you're getting pulled over. And you have tinted windows. We go through hell in here, man. Right? We getting taxed on everything. Inflation is getting high as hell. The only people able to even have a, a normal life now is them rich people. And they don't even be able to live rich no more. Because inflation is continuing to increase. It's oppression here, man. We hate it here. But surely oppression maketh the wise man mad according to Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 7. 
That's milk. All right? Let's get another preset. It's the book. Mm, I got a list of precepts, man. Right? But I really don't even want to do the precepts, man. I want to talk to my people today, man. How have my people been, man? Lord willing, my people have been okay. Lord willing, my people are enduring and they stand on fire in these last days, man. Because if you're not standing on fire in these last days, the Lord is going to sift you the hell out, man. Right? To hell with these notes, man. Right? If you're not standing on fire, the Lord is going to put you to death. Put me to death, man. Right? Put you to death. Put your kids to death. Put your family to death. The Lord is not a respect of persons, man. At all, man. He do he gives he, he gives everybody according to their works, man. And your works do follow you. Right? Ain't no easy way out, man. You gotta walk through that that straight gate, man. That straight and narrow gate. Right? Let's get a precept on that. Let's look on Matthew. Chapter 7 and verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. The wick, hey, that's why the Lord said, hey, you got three parts of a cake, right? Two thirds of it, they're going to go that way, man. But me, I'm going to take that high road. Brother, you got to be willing to take that high road. Be a weirdo. People are gonna think I'm weird. You you go you you can't give a damn. You can't give a damn, sister. Because we got a greater good, man. I want to be a part of a kingdom with streets paved with gold, so gold is clear. I want to be a part of those uh, 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 those walls of gold that it speaks about, and in, in the book of Revelation, the twenty first chapter, roughly paraphrasing. But the only way to be a part of that. It's to walk in through that straight gate, that narrow pathway. All right. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And few there be that find it. Some people, they hear about it, and they start walking. Like, you know what I mean? You're walking in the woods, and you're like, hey, this is the way over here, bro. That We've been walking in the woods for two weeks. Hey, bro, I, I, I heard there's the waves over here. But everybody else going over here, bro. I see every, everybody else going over here. So this got to be the right way. That's the wicked. You don't want to go over there, man. You don't want to go over there. We want to walk and take the high road where, where that brother that been camped out behind in a damn tent with, with, with a couple sticks. He got a couple bottles of water. He said, hey, man, I heard. I heard. That's the way over there. You don't even know where this brother came from. I heard that's the way over there. That's that angel behind your ear saying, hey, 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 this is the way. This is the way. But it be many there be that find it. A lot of brothers come into the truth. And they, because they call. But they fall out because they never found it. Brother and sisters, I'm talking to you. I want you to find it. I want you to continue searching until we can find it. Like the book of Matthew chapter 24 and 13 says, he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. This video was milk and very basic, but it's exhortation and edification for my people. I just want my people to understand that we are not alone. And a nation divided cannot stand. But a nation together, we shall conquer, overpower, and, uh, and moreover, destroy these heathens and rule forevermore, man. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Shai. Right? Let me get another precept. Let's the book of Saint Mark. Chapter 4 and verse 16. Let's get another precept. Mark 4 and verse 34. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, 
the name shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? What shall it profit a man if he gonna gain the whole world, be rich as hell, and he gonna lose his own soul, man? It ain't gonna profit a man a damn thing, man. It ain't gonna profit a man a damn thing going out there on the highways and byways teaching, right? A sister being righteous, right? And then all hell break loose, and then she going back to wearing a, a, a skinny jeans, tight ass spandex, booty shorts, and, and, and not being modest and being a, a let's just say ex extravagant. She puts a cross back on her neck. It's madness. It's madness. You're gonna lose your soul. The second death. The Lord promised these things. If you do these things, if you do those things, you're going to get these things. But if you do what the hell I said, you'll get life eternal, which is better than anything that you can ever dream of. We don't know what it's like, man. Just like you don't know what it's like to die. You can't say, uh, um, I wish I could. I wish I was dead. And then you just be dead. Unless the most high God wants you to be dead. You don't control anything in your life. So me as being a minister of the most high God. I'm telling my people. Repent ye therefore. Keep the commandments. Stay on fire. The Lord the Lord wants us to be on fire man. But if you're going to be not in the truth. And not keep the commandments. And be lukewarm as hell. The Lord rather you just be cold. So he can just destroy you for being cold. It grieves the most high to destroy something that's lukewarm. Right? Just like it will grieve you to be waiting two hours for your for your wife to get done cooking your food and then she gives it to you and it's lukewarm as hell, but you've been waiting for it to get off the off the stove. And then it's warm it's not even like it's not warm. It's like damn near cold, a little bit hot, you like, uh I ain't even in the mood for this shit no more. That's how the Lord is. Alright. Let's get the book of Revelations, chapter 3. In verse 15. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of thy mouth. The Lord's gonna spit you out of his mouth, man. Spit you out of his damn mouth, man. I don't want to be spit out of the most high God's mouth, man. Right? But we got to do these things, right? Let me get another preset. This is the book of 2 Corinthians. Chapter 5 and verse number 11. Salaki, so let's start at verse... Nine, wherefore we labor that whether per, Salakia verse nine, wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We all must appear before Hamashiach Yahawashai, right? That everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of Yahweh, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto Yahweh, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. So knowing the terror for the most whole, terror, the terror of the most high God, we persuade men. We tell you of the destruction, the famine that's coming to the earth. Right? The cannibalism that's coming back to the earth. Right? The racial wars that's coming back to the earth. Right? The government wars, the nuclear warfare that's coming to the earth, man. We let you guys know of these things through the spirit and power of Yahabashim Yahushai. We didn't know these things before the spirit put it on us to receive the knowledge and understanding of his word. But through the grace and power of the most high God, we've able to have, gain the knowledge and understanding to let our people know. Right? Let me get the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2. 
It's the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, and verse number 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Hamashiach Yehoshai, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Also. This is what we do it for, man. I don't do these edifications, these rebukes uh, 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 to get on everybody else and not myself. These videos are from myself mainly as well, man. Cutting myself up as well, man. I love my people, man. With a tender and mercy heart, and I lay my heart down right now for one of my brethren or my aquatium. Right? On any moment. Right? Verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness. As a good soldier of Yahweh Shalmashiach, no man that warth entangleth himself with the affairs of his life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Lawfully. Not worldly. Lawfully. Let's read that again. Verse number four. No man that warreth untangleth himself with the affairs of his life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. You got to strive lawfully. What we running for is the kingdom. How are we running for it? By taking our heritage back. Taking the kingdom back, like they say in the book of Daniel, man. Right? Let's get that real quick. Then the prophets. It's the book of Daniel, chapter seven and verse eighteen. But the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. The saints shall take the kingdom, man. We shall take the kingdom, man. It didn't say salvation for everybody. It said we shall take the kingdom. Man. We taking back our heritage, taking back our culture. You're not black. You're not Hispanic. Right? You're not Native American. Right? You're not Puerto Rican. You're not Jamaican. You are Israelite from one of the pursuing 12 tribes. My forefather, Jacob, who changed his name to Israel in the book of Genesis. Right? Let's get the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Because this is what we running. This is what we running for. You only running for this. This is the book of First Corinthians, chapter nine, and verse number twenty-three. And this I do for the gospel's sake. I'm not doing this for my own, 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 own vain opinion or own vain glory or or, or, or for likes or subscribes or shares or none of that damnable ass shit, man. I don't want it to get any likes. I want it to get shared to my people so they can hear the words of the Lord that they may come back and they may hear that this is the way. As it speaks of in the book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 21. Right. Let's just get it real quick. Got 50,000 precepts going through my mind right now. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 30. In verse number 21, and it says, let me start at verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. Right now we're going through affliction, persecution, death, turmoil, robbery, murder, rape, right? O uh, uh, daily oppression from these damn Elamites in the damn gas stations. These damn Hamites in African shops twisting up our, our sister's hairs, man, right? These damn Edomites everywhere. Everywhere. It's like a damn mice infest infestation, man. We getting oppressed. Right? And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. That's what you're hearing right now. When I'm getting want that button getting shared. I want them hearing this is the way. Not uh 
that brother doing something right for the community. No, the hell with that, man. I'm waking up my people so they could come back to the law, statutes, and commandments so we can get the hell out of this captivity, man. I hate it here. I hate it here. And all my people want to do is be busybodies. And it's time to be still. Sit down on that bed. Commune with yourself. Keep the law. Come back to the law. Stop being wicked. And kill that old man. All right? This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 23. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Right? Because I do this, I do this literally. Only for those who seek learning, man. Right? Verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but all but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. He didn't say walk, he said run. Run. Run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. So look, the world, they running after worldly things. Things that, that can't go with them when they in the ground. Money. Right? Sex. Right? Gold. Right? Houses, clothes, shoes, cars. Things that are corruptible but we an incor incorruptible crown things that's not gonna fade away like life eternal all right but we are an incorruptible i therefore so run not as uncertainly so fight i not as one that beateth the air so i don't fight this fight ain't ain't, 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 ain't some fight for nothing as one that beat if the air just swinging just mad like trey off a of fucking boys in the hood we ain't beating at the air like, what are we doing? What are we doing? We keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. But I keep under my body and bring it unto subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. I, I, I don't want to be a castaway, man. I don't want to be like the scribes and the damn Pharisees that the Most High God said not to be like. Right? Let's get that. In the book of St. Matthew, the uh, 23rd chapter. Yes, this is it. This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 23 and verse 1. Then spake Yahweh Shai to the multitude, to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you, meaning command you, observe. That observe and do, but do not ye after their works. For they say and do not. That's a hypocrite. Somebody to tell you to do something but won't do the damn things they self. Right? Verse 4. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their philosophies and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, rabbi, rabbi. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Hamashiach. All ye and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven, Yahweh. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Hamashiach, our Lord, our Savior, the anointed, the righteous, all right? But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So everybody, they want to live a damn uh, luxurious life. There ain't nothing wrong with that. The most I got blessed you with it. But people be putting that above uh, the, 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 the servant of the most High God, the laws, the statutes, and, and, and commandments, man. You can't do these type of things, man. The most I got gonna kill you. Deuteronomy 1 and 17, Colossians 3 and 25. Right? The Lord is not a is not a respect of persons at all. We'll put you to death. It's life or death with the Lord. You know everybody else they give you ultimatums and this or this or that. The Lord give you the most greatest, most harshest, greatest, most terriblest ultimatum ever. You either listen to what I said, or you're gonna go back in the dirt.
It's plain. It's the book. A Syrac. Chapter 33. And verse number 17. Consider that I labor not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. Hear me, O ye great men of the people, and hearken with your ears, ye rulers of the congregation. I don't labor for nothing. We don't labor for nothing. You don't labor for nothing, brother, sister. All right? We labor for everybody that seeks learning, who actually want to learn the law, statutes, and commandments, man. Who actually want to learn who they are. Who actually want to live in truth and not in folly, madness, on a pathway to destruction. The ending of the wicked is to be burned. I don't want to be burned. Do you want to be burned? Because I can keep pulling precepts. But it all comes down to what the hell are you going to do? Who's going to rise up for the most high God? Hmm? Who's going to rise up? Right? Who's going to rise up? You know who you are. You know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to you, brother. I'm talking to you, sister. What the hell are you going to do? Are you going to keep shaking your behind? Brother, are you going to keep rolling up that blunt? Brother, are you going to keep smoking? Brother, are you going to keep giving heed to these women? Are you going to keep being slothful and not putting out videos and not exhorting the nation? Are you going to keep hiding those talents in the ground like that wicked, slothful-ass servant did in the book of Matthew? Or are you going to flip them talents? Sister, you going to flip them talents. Are you going to be shamefaced? Are you going to obey your husband? All right? This is what it comes down to. You know these things. All right? Let me get two more precepts. Classics. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, and verse number 5. So, like it. Let me start in verse 3. This is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, and verse number 3. Since ye seek a proof of Hamashiach speaking in me, which to you word is which to you word is not weak, but is mighty in you which is the spirit in Pari Habashim Shai. For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of Yahweh toward you. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is in you, except ye be reprobates. But I trust that ye shall that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. We no reprobates, man. We God's chosen people. We just in the wickedness of this world. The Lord said, the Lord said, be not as the heathen, man. Examine yourself. You know what the hell you're doing wrong, brother. You know what the hell you doing wrong, sister. Brother, you ain't got no job. Sister, all you do is complain and nag. Get it together. Get it together, family. This is a message to the nation. Get it together. Our people is out of order, man. Don't give up now, man. You've been in this fight for I don't know how long, King. I don't know how long, Princess. Get it together. 
Or you're going to get got together by your Haobah Shimei Right? Let's see. The book. What I want. Let me get the book of Proverbs, chapter 17. He's my favorite. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 17, and verse 11. An evil man seeketh only rebellion, therefore a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. If you want to keep rebelling, you don't want to hearken, you don't think that this is true, you don't think that you got to do these things. Hey, 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 then the most high God gonna get up with you, man. That just is what it is, man. I'm out here and I'm out here for the people who seek learning and for those and everybody else, man, who, 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 who wanna live. I'm done hanging around people who, who, who wanna die, who okay with death. Because a lot of people are just dead, honestly. They, they, they walk in dead people, like it says in the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. In the valley of dry bones. Right? Who gonna rise up for the Lord, man? Are you gonna rise up for the Lord? You can continue to stay slothful and, and not do what the hell you need to do. And end up in a pit with your blind ass counselor. Like it pursues also in the book of Matthew. Two blind men are following each other. Or one blind man is following another blind man. They both are eventually going to fall in a damn valley or a ditch. Worth me paraphrasing. We're going to end it on this one. It's the book of Psalms. Chapter 94. We need two more. It's the book of Psalms. Chapter 94 and verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evil doors, or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Who gonna rise up for the Most High God in these last days, man? Are you gonna continue to soak, grope, bitch and moan? Excuse my French. Or are you gonna rise up? You gonna be a strong man, stand on your feet, man? Like it says in the Book of Second Kings or First Kings, the second chapter, man. Right? Roughly paraphrasing. Show thyself to be a man. Gird thyself up, man. Gird up thy loins, man. Show yourself to be a man in these last days. And be still and keep the law. Right? Verse 17. Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had, had almost dwelt in silence. Oh, the Lord didn't grab me up out of that water, man. Boy, I'd be a bully son of a... I'll be a boiling son of nothing. I will be not. I wouldn't be no more like my, like my forefathers. They are, we born their iniquities and they are not. Roughly paraphrasing, Lamentations 5 and 7. I wouldn't be. Verse 17, it says, Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, My foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Yahweh, held me up. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of, of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by law? They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. But the Lord is my defense and Yahweh is my rock of my refuge. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, Yahweh our God shall cut them off. You got to have faith in that, man. Don't let these damn demons have control of you, man. You got to have control and power over your own spirit, man. Because if you don't got control over your own spirit, man, the most high God ain't going to, why would he help you, man? Why would he have, Why would he help you if you don't want to help your own damn self, man? It's the book of Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 28. He that have no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. It's easily besieged, man. Easily. Easily. So as long as you're in this body, man, you got to know that as long as you can breathe, that you got another chance to praise the Most High God's name and magnify his name in the earth, man. I will magnify the Most High God's name in the earth, and I will do it again. And then again. And 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 again. His name can never be exalted enough. 
like it says in the book of Sirach, chapter 43, and verse number 30. I'm going to end on this one, though. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 104, and verse number 33. I will sing unto Yahweh as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. I will sing praise unto the my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in Yahweh. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou Yahweh, O my soul. Bless, praise ye Yahweh. Ba'ashim HaMashiach Yahusha. And with that, I'm going to give all honor, glory, and praise to the Most High God, Yahweh. Ba'ashim HaMashiach Yahusha. Yahusha. Brakata Yahawa, Brakta Oshai, Brakta Yahawa, Brakta Oshai, Brakta Yahawa, Brakta Oshai. Shalom, family. Continue to endure, stay on fire, man. Or be cold and be destroyed. Shalom.